I swung back at it. I'm looking back at this 2003, I believe, SL500 that I bought for very cheap um, a while back. It's in rough condition. This was a customer of mine who I sold Silver's Neo Max adjustable coilovers to a few years back. He's uh, local here in Cincinnati. He had somebody else install it, uh, the coilovers that didn't know what they were doing. And he constantly had an issue with it being too high, too low. Uh, they just didn't know what they were doing. They couldn't get the preload right, the dampening right. Um, ultimately, he enjoyed the car for about two or three years, and then he wound up crashing it. it looks like he's been in multiple accidents um, just because of his carelessness, uh, I, I believe. Um, no offense to him, uh, but when you own a Mercedes, you're supposed to treat it like a Mercedes. And unfortunately, I think he treated this one like a, a Dodge Neon. <laughs> I'm not going to say a Honda Civic because people love their Honda Civics and they take care of them. Dodge Neons, they drive them things until they fall apart. Uh, also kind of like Dodge. Yeah, it is a Dodge, isn't it? <laughs> you know, I hate Dodges. Anyway, listen, so this Mercedes right here um, is in rough shape. So I've had it in my possession now for a while. Now, it's been back in storage because I have other projects that I've been working on. Uh, but it's time to get this thing out of storage and start either restoring it, sell it as is, or use it for parts. So what do I do? What do I do? Can I save this car? Let's take a detailed look at the condition of the car. You see the crack lower bumper right here? That's common. You see a dent right here on the hood. That's not common. You see the bumper itself really is tore up. You see this headlight right here is tore up. That's from an accident. These wheels right here came off of an S500. I put them on here because the wheels that were on here, I put on another SL that I sold. They were actually nice wheels, like 19 inch wheels, staggered, five spoke. This window right here will not go up all the way. Uh, and so it will not activate this one to go up. So this window is off, it's not off track, but the window regulator, uh, it's not working properly. Um, so that window regulator needs to be replaced. Let's just look at the outside first, okay? The brake light, broken. Unfortunately, it's common to replace those. Uh, you typically do get cracks and issues with that brake uh, light. The antenna is missing. This rear bumper is scraped up. A lot of the uh, panels from the inside are missing. Like the wheel well covers. Uh, this right here, missing. This front bumper is tore up at the bottom too. See here? So I don't think this front bumper really is worth saving. Plus it's not even an AMG front bumper, it's just a standard SL bumper. Obviously it's missing that grill. That grill needs to be replaced. I think that's it for the exterior. Now let's look at the interior. The interior is tore up. Now, it's sad because it's the Zeno, which some people call Designo, interior. So it's the all black interior, the real black, not the uh, gray, dark gray like over there on the uh, SL55. So the Designo interior is uh, highly preferred because really they, they offer like really neat colors. They offer the jet black, like the real black, which is what Mercedes should have used anyways, instead of that dark uh, charcoal gray. So the seat is tore up, that's obvious. Just the cushion, just the bottom part. Same thing right here. This lumbar, this right here, is split, that can be repaired. This thing was infested with ants. It had a couple ant farms uh, when I first got it. But sitting back in that garage, in that storage, looked like all the ants died, but there have been mice inside of here, at least one mouse. Uh, because I saw a lot of chewed up little stuff and some little nuts and things from trees uh, up under the seats. So there has been a mouse living inside of here. That's always bad because if you let it live in there too long, it can start tearing up wires and stuff. So you don't want that. So I'll probably uh, clean this out regardless. Maybe even put some some ant, I mean some uh, some some mouse traps or something. You know what I mean? Just to make sure that uh, that thing uh, it no longer poses a problem. They usually like to hang out in the uh, hood where it's warm. They hang out inside, of course, and in the truck. If you, if you want to know if you have a mouse inside of there, just look for little chewed up little pieces of paper or foam or padding or things of that nature. But keep your cars uh, closed if possible. This one has a 
quarter window that's open over there, so easy access for a mouse. These uh, door hand, uh, the, let me see, the driver's side door panel, this right here pushed through. Unfortunately, it's a common problem that the back side of those can break off through slamming these doors over and over again in time and heat, cold, whatever. I'm trying to swat away a, a bee, sorry about that. Also, these switches right here need to be replaced. Those are done for, so you have to buy that. This piece, I'm sure, just fell down inside there. Um, I can't remember what that's for. What is that for? That's not your, I can't remember. Is it the memory? No, it's not the memory. Hold on, let me go compare it real quick. I forgot what that's for. You guys probably already know. I just can't think right now. Oh, there you go. That's your trunk. All right, so that fell back in there. Um, let's go ahead and uh, look at this passenger side. Of course, when you open these up, the windows should drop down as if the window was up all the way. Because the window's not up all, all, all the way up, it's not going to drop down when you open the door. Again, that's the cause of this window, the rear window, not going up. It will not go up if this window is not all the way up. So again, we have the torn up seat. The radio does not work. Like, it won't come on. So, don't know why. It does have good AC. The AC is ice cold. Ha! That's the one good thing. This right here, you can see here that it's starting to uh, lean or, or sink down. Unfortunately, uh, that's common inside of here for that um, LCD screen to uh, either break loose or the glue becomes unglued. I don't know, I can't remember how it's attached, but I've seen people with issues with these. You gotta pull that out, disassemble it, whatever, re-glue it, whatever's the issue. You know, sometimes those little screws in there break also. Again, the brittle, they become brittle uh, just because of the heat. Um, this is tore up. Oh, is that tore up? No, it just has double-sided tape on there. I think these do work. This one's kind of stuck. Yeah, whatever. Radio has not come on. This piece right here is missing. This is for your uh, mirror controls. That's missing. Do work. All right. Lumbar works. Sort of. It wants to. Hasn't worked in a while, I can tell. Kind of didn't want to work at first. All right. The top, I believe, does not work. Um, also, you don't have that cover in the rear, so I don't even know if the top works or not. Just the way that this car has been neglected, I'm assuming it does not work. Yeah, this cover is missing. You need a cover to close on these points right here. There is a switch on one of those. You can uh, just, I think, just uh, wire them or uh, jump the wire so that it thinks that it's always closed. That enables you to put more back here, but it's a safety thing uh, for the uh, top, the uh, functionality of the top. You don't want so much stuff back here that the top can't uh, fully uh, close or open up and uh, fall back into this trunk. It can cause some mechanical issues. So uh, it's there for protection, that cover. It just limits how much stuff you can put back there. But yeah, here goes some of these covers right here, these wheel wheel covers, engine cover right there, uh, intakes, those are raggedy. Uh, so there's some trunk stuff that's missing. Um, the battery is uh, weak, I had to jump it. I had to use a jumper box to, to get it to jump, but it did start, so the front battery is good. I do have the battery light. Let me see, it was on. All right, so I'm assuming it's that rear battery. And if it's not the rear battery, then it's the uh, battery regulator module. Well, just regulator module, whatever it's called. So we got a couple of lights that's on. No beam right because the <laughs> headlight is busted. Also because I removed the uh, ballast when I was trying to fix another person's car. I used uh, the parts for that. Push your washer, fluid, these gas. 
217,000 miles. Woo! 217, 411. Ain't that something? AC still blows. The car still shifts. The engine still runs. He did some exhaust work. Uh, he, maybe he took like the uh, mufflers off, I think. I ain't gonna lie. This sound good. This sound real good. Yeah. I mean, this thing drives, man. So is it really a parts car? It drives. I can see the suspension was busted, but it's on coilover, so you don't have to worry about the AVC anymore. It needs some love. Somebody's gonna buy this car and be happy just to have an SL, a project car, you know what I mean? Look, a project car. What they're gonna do to it is like fix the stuff, take your time. It's a good running car, it runs. It just needs some work, it needs some love. So what would you guys do? Part it out, restore it, sell it as is? I mean, I don't need it. I have, this is my 10th Mercedes. I don't need it. I have nine other Mercedes that run. I still need to be working on this 500 SEC Euro spec. So the last thing I really need to be doing is spending a whole lot of money and time in something if it's not gonna benefit me financially. So should I pass this on to somebody? Do you wanna buy this? Do you know somebody that wants to buy this? What would I sell it for? It's probably your next question. If I were to sell it as is, it's a running car. It's probably worth about 3,500 dollars maybe four thousand something like that oh is that too much oh what's it worth to you you tell me because somebody's buying an sl they got a buttload of miles on it but it runs it needs a lot of work so what do you think 2500 i say no less than three thousand i would be happy with four thousand we'll see if i start putting money into it and start fixing things and replacing things the number's going to go up because you know a headlight's going to cost three or four hundred dollars I could put spacers on these wheels and poke them out, make them look like something. Look like they belong on the car. As of right now, they look like they don't belong on the car. They're too tucked in. Somebody might want, might not want the car sitting so low. So I could just raise it. It's Silver's Neo Max. I know how to raise that. This right here, I have a couple of these lights at home, so I can put that on there. I don't know. You tell me, what's it worth to you? Busted mirror right there. I have a, uh, another glass I can put on top of that. I don't know, guys. What do you think? What should I do with this? What do you think I should do with that? I don't know. I need to be starting on this right here. This is my baby. I need to get this together. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you guys. This SL55 on adjustable coilovers, Silver's Neomax, Swiss Spring Upgrade. Man, you guys can't tell me anything regarding... It takes away from the ride. ABC is so god it's a godsend in comparison to these devilish cheap uh Silver's Neo Max adjustable coilovers. You must be out your mind. I drive this thing so crazy fast and aggressive on the highway. I switch flames, no sway bars. Man, get out of here. Please guys, listen to what I'm saying. If you haven't experienced it, don't give me your opinion on it unless you've experienced it. And if you experience it with adjustable coilovers, not Strutmaster, and not some cheap brand like Hero or some crap that somebody else has, has come up with and they can sell to you for cheap, uh, buy Silver's Neomax adjustable coilovers and you will see the difference. The deputy settings are good. The spring rate is perfect. The adjustability of them, the quality of them is on point. So, this is a proven example that Silver's Neo Max on an AMG, a car that is not driven on Sundays only, but is driven very fast and aggressively, handles very well. If you don't believe me, believe me, I don't know what else to tell you. It's the truth. Reach out to people who have done this upgrade and stop talking to the people who just work for Mercedes or have been working on Mercedes for 25 years. The OEM system. And if they dealt with customers who have gone the alternative route, ask more probing questions. Just don't assume that all coilovers are the same. That's foolishness, guys. Come on, man. Everybody makes a hamburger, doesn't make the same hamburger. So don't think that all coilovers are the same. They are diverse, and there's a difference amongst the brands and the quality and the feel of adjustable coilovers. Make sure you talk to somebody who has installed Silver's Neo Max adjustable coilovers and has done the proper adjustment and dialing in. It is a fantastic ride, guys. I swear to you.
All right, so what do I do with this one? This has Silver's Neo Max adjustable coilovers in it. What should I do with this car? You guys let me know. I have things I have to take care of, guys. If you need some parts, I have plenty of parts. I have plenty of lines right here. All right, I sell these lines on eBay. Those of you who need some parts, let me know. I can hook you up specifically. I have wheels in here. I have a lot of options regarding different wheels and tires. That's what I do. I work on these Mercedes. I modify these Mercedes. I enjoy these Mercedes. There goes a bunch of uh, ABC struts. I have stacks of them. Some of them are in better condition than others. You know, I have parts, more tires. I have a lot going on, guys, and so talk to me. I have more parts at home. I'm selling parts from other Mercedes on eBay. Um, check out Gold Element Auto Works, a seller on eBay. I do all that on there as well. Go to my website, www.goldelementautoworks.com if you want silvers, adjustable coilovers, if you want coilovers for other Mercedes models. I have them for the CLS, the C-Class, the G-Class, uh, the S-Class, the E-Class, the uh, suit. Uh, did I say S-Class? I have them for a bunch of them, the CLs. Uh, let me know. Uh, my website is full of parts, uh, brand new parts, uh, ways to customize and modify your Mercedes Benz. So, again, my name is Brandon Green, owner of Gold Element Auto Works. Give me a call or a text message, area code 513-967-8079. I'll talk to you guys later, more to come. Let me know what you think I should do with this car. What's your opinion? Let me know.